You're watching The Globe on SAPC News and we're coming to you live from Johannesburg. It's just gone up to 10 p.m. Central African time. Thank you for watching. I'm Simpia Ngoma. Indeed, thank you for joining us. Now, onto our top story. Supporters of the DRC's Union for Democracy and Social Progress have rejected the selection of Martin Fayulu of the Engagement for Citizenship and Development Party as a unity opposition coalition candidate. Fayulu will face President Joseph Kabila's preferred successor for the ruling party, Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari, in the Democratic Republic of Congo's election on the 23rd of December. It's the UDPS and the base that decides. We voted for Felix Chisakedi at the Congress as our presidential candidate. How can he change position? Because he is with those people over there. We are saying that we will not accept this. UDPS does not belong to Felix Chisakedi. A group of seven Congolese political opposition leaders announced their decision for a unity presidential candidate on Sunday, prompting protest from supporters. The decision comes after marathon talks in Geneva, Switzerland. An opinion poll in July showed opposition leaders were favored by about 70% of voters, but the ruling party enjoys significant financial and institutional advantages. We are unhappy about the silliness that took place yesterday in Geneva. So we, the UDPS base, we are shouting loud and clear that what happened in Geneva yesterday does not concern us and does not engage the UDPS. Several prominent opposition leaders, including former Vice President Jean-Pierre Bemba and millionaire businessman Moise Katumbi, were barred by authorities from running decisions the opposition accused of being politically motivated. It's not easy because we went for a popular guy like Felix Chisikedi from the UDPS. He's the one who campaigned for the UDPS, a party that has lost members who were killed. We have orphans in the party. If this is a choice for the country, for the fight that we are going to lead here in the Congo for the election, then it's not a problem and we give Fayulu the chance. But if they are hiding something, then I don't know. Fayulu said he had significant support and that Bemba's backing would also boost his voter base. The opposition also accuses the government of planning to rig the election. The government denies that charge. The country, which has significant natural resources, has never known a peaceful transition of power since it gained independence from Belgium in 1916. And some experts fear the December elections will trigger a bloody conflict. African affairs analyst and Channel Africa's uh, Nixon Katembo joins me now in studio for more on these developments from the DRC. Nixon, as always, it's a pleasure having you in studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for welcoming me once again. It's an absolute pleasure. We've uh, talked at length about the D uh, DRC polls and the country's readiness to go into the polls. And, and I think it's, it suffices to mention that we need to revisit, the, revisit this issue. How, how prepared are they to go to the elections? Well, uh, the preparations have been going on, but at the government side, the opposition and other stakeholders are not part of the system. So one would wonder that this is just a, a independent electoral commission driven um, processes without the involvement of all stakeholders who have been questioning, uh, you know, the preparative m uh, mode of, of, the, of the electoral commission. But also reports of the government uh, army uh, being involved in the transportation of electoral materials such as the voting machine which have been rejected by the opposition. So, that so far, that's how the preparation of the elections are. There, there were no voter education as such and uh, this poses a, a, a challenge on how those elections are going to, to be held adding to the logistical uh, problem that already existing 
Mm. And speaking of the uh, electronic voting machines, which you've just mentioned, uh, just how would that not compromise the quality and the credibility of the elections? Because some people have never actually used uh, computers in their lives and will only be using them for the very first time. Uh, will this compromise the openness and the fairness of this There of this is process? no doubt. There is no doubt that the elections are, uh, and the process uh, uh, leading to these uh, elections are already compromised in, in terms of how the elections have been prepared. And this is the point that um, many international observers have been raising with the DRC government as well as the independent electoral commissions. And not only that, the opposition have cried foul over these issues to death years. So in, indeed, there are uh, critical questions that need to be resolved, but unfortunately, time is, is not on the side of the opposition, neither on the side of the government, given the electoral calendar that have been announced by the Independent Electoral Commission. What's the main problem, though, with the uh, electronic voting machines? I mean, to what extent would it, uh, uh, you know, impede on the co on the transparency of the I think the this, this is the first time the DRC is using such a, an, an electoral, uh, an, I mean, a electronic voting machine, and there has been a problem in even developed countries such as the United States, the UK, and Germany. Uh, where th this electoral voting machine causes a problem. And for a country wi with a minimal um, infrastructure for the nature of using such electro electoral machines is, is non-existent, mm -hmm. you expect it to cause a major problem because of uh, infrastructure uh, backlog in the country. Now, the opposition has now appointed or anointed a uh, unity candidate to contest the polls on the 23rd of December. But then there's been outcry and uh, there's been reports that this unity candidate has been rejected by the opposition leaders. Uh, Joe, who is this Martin uh, Fayulu? Okay, Martin Fayulu is a businessman. Uh, he, he was one opposition leader who obtained his MBA in the European American University in uh, San Francisco in California and he was part of the uh, political process uh, under the Mobutu regime when uh, the National Sovereign Conference was organized in 1990 and uh, after that he, he was elected to the high caste or to in the transitional uh, parliament in 1993. Um, by that time he was leading a party called for Forum for the Democracy and Development. But he went underground and uh, went and worked for ExxonMobil and then returned to DRC working in the petroleum industry and he has been in business. So for him having imagined power uh, in power it's, it's because he was elected in 2006 as a, to the National Assembly and eventually again into uh, the parliament, I mean, into the Senate in 2011. So he has been part and part of the uh, political process, even though with the minimal support and the minimal, you know, national appeal to the local population. So, but coming to how he has been um, selected, I mean, I mean, uh, this is not uh, just a selection to me. And to some of us who have been watching closely the event in the DRC, he, he, he is a political compromise. Um, Etienne Giseke, um, I mean Felix Sekedi went in with Vital Kamere, high, high, head high, knowing that they are going to actually be elected to, to, to the lead the opposition, but that didn't happen because of the influence uh, that has been happened. Remember the meeting that they went to, in Geneva was uh, led by the Kofi Annan Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the Kofi Annan Foundation executive director is Alan Claude Doss, who was at the time Monisco's head of mission in the DRC in 2006, 2007, until 2009. And he understand um, uh, the issues in the DRC and the international influence in the political scene in the country. And he has m played a critical role in bringing these opposition leaders to Geneva. Now, do we need to ask a question, why did they go to Geneva? Why did the Kofi Annan Foundation have to actually chair this meeting between the opposition leaders and actually bringing someone who have worked with ExxonMobil? And you know ExxonMobil is an American oil yes. company yes. that yes. actually tells you much about uh, external influence that are uh, 
you know, in, in, you know, playing out in the political process in the DRC. So, and having said that, uh, Nixon, I mean, from your description of Mr. Uh, Martin Fayulu, I get the impression that he's got vast experience in the corporate sector and very little experience uh, in the political space. So how would he be able to manage uh, the elaborate and very complex DRC politics? Indeed, that's the question that everyone is asking himself because there are those who have a political experience uh, rather than him, even though he had that, uh, he's not new to the uh, political process in the DRC, but I don't think that he's the man who, who was supposed to, to have taken this uh, lead uh, as far as the opposition is concerned. And uh, that's why you've seen a protest in Kinshasa, protests within the opposition political parties who are calling actually for their leaders to rescind their signatures uh, and maybe choose uh, another person. And this time they are clear to say that no, at least if it was uh, Felix Chisekedi or Vital Kamere, they would have understood. But going as far as uh, electing someone like uh, Marte Fayulu, it, uh, they, they don't see that because they say that we have been fighting this battle and uh, this is a ploy actually to divide even the opposition further. So it's, it is uh, okay. difficult to understand how he's going to actually galvanize support uh, uh, from this uh, politi okay. different political fear. And I'm going to interrupt you together. there. Yeah, I'm going to have to interrupt yeah. you there. I do beg your pardon. And uh, uh, news just in now, the head of the DRC's biggest opposition party, Etienne Tizagedi, said on Monday that he was abandoning a day-old agreement to field a joint opposition candidate in next month's presidential elections. Now, Tizagedi made the announcement in an interview with the radio station Top Congo. He spoke shortly after the Secretary General of his party, uh, the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, gave him 48 hours to roll back from the decision in the face of a protest by activists. Now, this is a, a breaking story, Nixon, and news just in. What do you make of it? This was not uh, uh, something that uh, uh, surprising. It's, uh, it was expected because you have leaders who are called in Geneva to sit on a table and they imposed a person who uh, do not have uh, national appeal, who do not have uh, mm -hmm. uh, political support, especially the base within the broader Congolese opposition politics. And uh, that's what happened. I mean, I followed Mark Kabund, who is the Secretary General of the uh, Union for Democracy and the Social Progress, IDPS, saying that we are going to, to, to uh, tell our president that we, he needs to rescind his signature. And, and exactly this is what happened. Because uh, the opposition, I mean, the, to cho having chosen Marte Fayula as the common candidate, was not a homegrown solution. And I one wonder why uh, our African leaders are, are playing their role in... in as in as much as they always say that you know African problem for African solutions, and we don't seem to see that happening in the case of the DRC. And not only that, I'm afraid that even these elections might even not happen mm -hmm. owing to the you know pull and push factors of of the electoral politics yeah. in the DRC. Uh, you have the regions of the Beni. Uh, in the North Kiv province, under total disarray in, in war, people are being killed day and night. I mean, every day you have at least five to six people uh, uh, declared dead by rebel groups. You have the Katanga, um, I mean, the Kasai region, which is another hot spot of violence. You have a Congolese refugee coming out from Angola and all these issues are not being talked about. The, quite a number of almost 4 million displaced people in the country. How are they going to, to, to organize an elections while these people are facing serious war, displacement, and some are facing starvation? Now you have added the Ebola uh, crisis, which is still uh, ravaging the east part of the country. So it's interesting to see why the African Union is not coming to the board to making sure that they participate in the political process. SADC is another 
uh, organ which uh, could have had a much influence on, on the DRC politics and providing direction on to its historical participation in the political process in the DRC and bringing together all the political parties under the Sun City and uh, finding a solution to uh, the, the war at the time in, in the early 2000. Why now they are taking a, a, a back seat in finding a solution to the electoral crisis that is presenting itself in the DRC. And just briefly, we don't have much time, unfortunately, and I do understand that uh, the country's ruling party has now accepted the unity candidate uh, from the opposition. Is this a, a, a sign that the democracy is really maturing in the DRC? Well, uh, the democracy of um, political patronage. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, one would call it, in my own term, a rented democracy because you have just the, 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 the president designating someone without even his own political parties coming together to say, no, this is uh, the person we choose as a delegate of our political party. But the, the, uh, the, the, the Ramazan Shadari himself was handpicked by the president. And now you have another opposition leader who is also a compromise yes. candidate imposed on the opposition to run as a, as a, as a the unique candidate for the opposition. So it, it, there are so many other underlying factors that uh, maybe we cannot discuss in this program alone. It will take time, but that is the nature of politics currently in the DRC. Mm -hmm. And one anticipate even more violence in the coming days. All right. Nixon, as always, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank that you. was African Af Africa analyst, uh, uh, Mr. Nixon uh, Katembe. All right.